And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Now most of what I deal with feathers is I use them in my hats. But in this game, which is called Magic Feathers from Hava Games, who makes great kids games, you're going to be taking a feather and blowing it on top of tiles. Trying to use a dexterity to get that feather to land on the tiles you want. Capturing magical animals for the zoo or enchanting them or something like that. I'll show you. The game comes with a pile of feathers, so you're going to have one of those feathers. And that feather you need to place on your hand and then blow it off to make it land on something. So you have to keep your arm uh, about an arm's length away. And you simply are blowing it straight on the feather. <clears throat> when the feather lands on the table, you look and see what its stem touches. So the stem was touching both of these, so I might take the hippo and put the hippo in front of me. So now my goal is to try to get the hippo again. The other hippo is right here. Let's see if I can do it. Okay. If you miss, like I did this time, then you get nothing. Let's move the hippo a little bit closer so we can... Let's try it again. Nope. Oh, I got this one. And the reason I'm trying to get the matching pair of a hippo is because once I get the matching pair of something, then they're both enchanted. Woo! which turns them over to their enchanted side. They're safe. If someone else would get the hippo, or that wasn't even a hippo, where's hippo? The hippo, then it gets enchanted and pulls mine away from me and they get it. If you get a pair, you also get the magic bird. The magic bird shows up and you can pick one of your single animals that you have. You put the magic bird on that animal and if somebody else is feather lands an animal, boom, your magic bird calls them over. So getting a pair is obviously a very good thing. So it doesn't matter how many uh, tiles your feather lands on, it's basically just a where to s you can pick one of the ones it lands on. I'm not doing very hot here, am I? And that's pretty much the game. You're just going to be blowing these feathers on, and you're going to keep going. You're gonna, as, as time goes by, it says you can push things in. Once everyone has gotten all the animals, you count the number of pairs that you have, and whoever has the most pairs is the winner of the game. So I, as I play this with kids, I have to teach them constantly not to, to blow down because it doesn't do anything. You have to get the feather and blow just, you know, and then make it land. But you can also, sometimes they'll catch like the strands of the feather between their fingers. The kids won't realize you're doing it and it doesn't go anywhere. So I tell them to put it on their palm and just then give it a push like that. Now here's the deal. There are games where you throw dice. There are games where you throw discs. There are games where you do all sorts of things. You can't. You can control those sometimes. You can try to control a feather. It isn't going to happen. Um, also, for some reason, the feathers were all different sizes. The blue, the green, and the red were bigger. But even the red had a small and a big. So I got around that problem really easily by letting each player pick what color you want to use. So they usually picked the biggest feather because why not? Um, or just you all use the same feather because obviously a bigger feather has a better chance at a smaller feather. You might argue and say, but a smaller feather can go farther. Whatever. That bigger feather covers more area. It's a bigger deal. So because you have a hard time controlling the feather, the game is lucky-ish, right? There's some skill maybe at blowing the feather and making it go in a certain direction, but to get it to land on something, very difficult, especially for kids to do. But that doesn't matter in this game. The game is a unique concept. It's a novelty to blow feathers onto tiles, to collect the pairs of tiles. The artwork is fine. I do wish that the enchanted side showed the animal like, I wish they'd use different art. Like on the regular side, the animal is, mm -hmm. and then on the other side, the animal is like, woo, I'm enchanted now. I thought that would have been more easy just to recognize which side is which. Um, but the kids enjoyed it. Now, because it's a novelty, I don't think it has super long legs. I think you'll bring this out and play it once in a while. And the feathers, you got, when you're playing with kids, this is one you want to supervise because feathers are fairly fragile and it would be easy for them to, to mess it up. But I do give this game props for being something new and unique for kids. We weren't throwing dice or flicking discs. We were blowing feathers. 
So that's pretty much the concept of that. That's Magic Feathers. It's one of those games where I think I could have just hit the title of the game and you might have even understood it. You could have skipped this whole review. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.